Hi, I'm Kristen Amdahl and welcome back to my studio. I've been a teacher, designer, and author in the craft industry for over 15 years. In this video, I want to show you some tips and tricks for making one of the projects from my brand new book, 52 Crochet Gifts. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make the rosemary ear warmer with a twist. This super simple textured ear warmer is elevated into a sophisticated head wrap with the addition of a twist in the middle. You'll need one ball of Be So Tender yarn, which is my number four worsted weight, 100% cotton yarn. In this sample, I used Colorway Rose, and you're also going to need a size I9 or 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. Let's get started. First, we're going to tie our yarn to our crochet hook. You can use a square knot, a slip knot. There's no wrong way to tie your yarn to your crochet hook, whatever works best for you. And the pattern calls for chain 19. I'm going to do a smaller version of the ear warmer for the video, but if you were doing the full size version, you would chain 19. And I'm going to do 11 for the sample. And then you're going to single crochet into the second chain from your hook. What that means is we're not going to count the loop on our hook. That's your working loop. So we'll count back one and two. And single crochet into that chain. Insert your crochet hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook. And you're going to repeat that in each chain across. If you were going to modify this pattern in any way, you would want to make sure that the number of single crochets at the end of row one is an even number, simply because we are going to be splitting it in half in order to create that twist. This is what the end of row one should look like. Yours would just be a little bit bigger because you'll do more stitches for your first row. Row two begins with a chain one and turn your work. And now we're going to work single crochet through the back loop only. And what that means is you have the top of your stitch here where you see kind of like a V formation of two loops. Normally we work into the front of it here and work through both of those loops, but instead we're going to tilt the work towards us so we can see the top of those two loops and insert the crochet hook into the back loop only. Yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. So single crochet through the back loop only is insert your crochet hook into the back loop only of the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. And you wanna repeat that all the way across. Row three is going to be a repeat of row two, so we're going to chain one and turn our work. And now working into the front, our back loop only, we're going to work single crochet back loop only into each stitch across. The only trick to really pay attention to here though, is that when you're working rows of single crochet, sometimes it can be confusing to figure out where that first stitch is. So we have our working loop on our crochet hook, this is the chain one that we just made when we turned our row, and this is the first stitch. Sometimes it can get confusing and you can because they look similar when you're looking at the top of it. So keep mindful of the fact that this is the working loop on your crochet hook, this is the chain one, and this is the first single crochet. So this is where you're going to work your first stitch. Insert your crochet hook into the back loop only, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and we'll work single crochet through the back loop only in each stitch across. And that's the case for row three, and you'll repeat this through rows 20. Okay, so if you're following along the pattern, you would want to do this for 20 rows. If you're modifying this to make a different size, you would want to do two inches shy of half the circumference that you need for your ear warmer. And then we're going to work the next several rows separate. Well, that's not, that's not what I'm trying to say. We're gonna work half of the row in one piece, then the other half of the row in the second piece, so that they're worked 
side by side, but there's a split down the middle so that at the end of that section, we can then twist them. Show you on this piece. Notice how this piece is completely separate from the other piece. That's because at this point, we worked this section by itself and then that section by itself. So you'll want to do half of your stitches for the first half. So if you're doing the pattern in, you know, the size of the pattern, you'll work across the first nine stitches because it's uh, 18 stitches. And for this one, I did 10 stitches. So we're gonna work across the first five. So we did chain one, single crochet through the back loop across the first five stitches of the row. And so at this moment, we're going to skip the rest of the row and just turn our work and work now one single crochet into each stitch across, maintaining half of our stitch count. Nope, I think I skipped a stitch. This is, like I said before, it's something that's really easy to do when working in single crochet. You've got your working, lip, working loop, your chain one, there's your first stitch. I skipped that one, so we'll single crochet through the back loop only. Okay, so I did my strips about three inches long, and you can refer to your pattern to see how many rows that is. And so when this half of the strip is the correct length, you want to fasten off, and then I'll show you how to start the second one. Okay, I've finished the number of rows I wanted to do for the first half, so I'll cut the yarn and fasten off. I do like to make sure that you do the same number of rows on both sides, and I think it helps in this pattern to do an even number of rows on both sides, So we're go if you're modifying. So now we're going to grab our yarn. So now we'll tie our yarn back onto our crochet hook. And working into the first skipped stitch on that previous row, we're gonna work from the same side. So we started at this side and worked across. We're gonna start in the very next stitch here. So we'll join with a slip stitch into the back loop only, chain one and single crochet in the same stitch, back loop only, and then single crochet in the back loop only for the rest of the stitches across the row. My row has five stitches, the pattern calls for nine, and if you're modifying, you'll just wanna make sure that you do the same number of stitches here that you did over here where you're splitting the row exactly in half. And now we will work the same number of rows on this side that we did on this side with a chain one. Turn your work, single crochet through the back loop only in each stitch across. And again, do the same number of rows that we did on the other side, only this time we're not going to fasten off when we get to that size. Okay, we've worked the same number of rows on either side of the split, and now it's time to join these back together after twisting them. So what we're going to do is prepare to work the next row from where the yarn is, and after we twist it, Notice how that becomes the beginning of the row. Isn't that great? So what I like to do at this point is take a split ring stitch marker and secure the two pieces overlapped for the next couple of rows. I find that when I don't secure them for a couple of rows, you can get extra twists in your work, and just to be on the safe side, if you have a split ring stitch marker, just secure them in place while you work the first couple of rows. So now we will start with a chain one. Oh, looks like I already have my chain one. And then single crochet through the back loop on each stitch on the first half of the strip. And then just working along the second half of the strip, we will combine these back into one row of crochet. At the end of this row, your stitch count should be exactly the same as it was down here before we did our split. And now there's our first row of everything joined back together. So now you'll chain one, turn your work, and one single crochet in each stitch across 
in the back loop only. And now you want to repeat that row so that you have the same number of rows before the split as you do after the split. All right, when it's time to join, once you have your full size wrap done, you want to fold this in half. You want to fold it in half so that the working, the last row that you just worked will be facing you and the beginning chain from the first row will be further away from you once you turn your work. So we're going to chain one, turn our work, and so now that last row is closest to us and the beginning chain from the beginning of the project is further away from us. And we're going to single crochet through the back loop through both thicknesses. So single crochet through the back loop of the first stitch and then single and then insert, okay. <laughs> insert your hook into the back loop only of that first stitch on the row facing you and insert your hook into the first chain on this uh, piece further away from you. And then we will single crochet both of those together, working through both thicknesses. So insert your hook now into the back loop only of the next stitch and the next chain. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, single crochet, insert your hook into the back loop only of the next row and the chain on the thickness behind there and work a single crochet through both of them. And you want to repeat this all the way across. If you do not feel comfortable single crocheting through both thicknesses and doing this across the row, you could also pick up your yarn needle and sew these together instead. You know, whichever method of joining makes you more comfortable. You could also slip stitch through both thicknesses. You could do this working through both loops of the single crochet row if you're more comfortable doing that. Um, you know, there isn't a wrong way of joining them together. Any of those techniques will work. I just feel like when you do it, work through the back loop only and do a row of single crochet, it ends up looking a lot more invisible. Here it is on the finished one. You can hardly see, well, you can see a little bit, but you can see it still has the texture of the other rows and I feel like it blends into the work really nicely that way. And this is what our finished head warmer will look like. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please leave them for me in the comments. And don't forget, all the links from the things that we talked about in this video are available in the video description below. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. I'll see you in the next video.